and we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to be sorting out this tree. We've discovered in the last episode this thing needs a lot of calories, so we're going to have to turn this entire planet into, well, a lot of calorie production. Now there's been a few suggestions on how we do it, but I think the first thing we should do is maybe core out this area here, and then we're going to have to go about stripping out all this magma. We don't want this magma taking up space now, do we? The plan here is pretty simple. We want to break open as much space as possible across the entire map to plant as much food as possible so that we can feed it all to the ravenously hungry tree up here. And to do that, I also, well, to do that we need to get rid of the magma. And to get rid of the magma, well, there's a couple of ways we could go about it. We could, of course, drain the heat out of it, turn it into rock, that type of thing. That is far more time consuming than just dumping it into space. So I think we're just going to vacuum out this side of the map. Then we're going to use pitcher pumps to pull all this magma and dump it into space. Uh, we're just going to have it go straight up here. Should be fairly handy to build in. I think it'd help a little bit if we chop the top off this sucker. That should that should help some of that gas escape out of there. This is going to be our sort of vacuum sealed tunnel for removing all this magma. Because when you're working with magma, always work in a vacuum. Just always. The only time you can't, you can avoid working in a vacuum is when you have an entire ocean dropping on top of it. That's that's about the only instance I'm aware of where you can work with magma without a vacuum. With this perfect vacuum in place, it should be a case that we can now dig down here with relative safety. Relative being the operative word here, because when you're dealing with magma, it's always, your safety is pretty much always relative. Now, we're going to have to dig across here, and most of the stuff we want to build out of is igneous rock. Well, not, sorry, not igneous rock, obsidian. Once you start getting down to those levels, obsidian is your only choice because everything else just melts the moment it touches the magma because, you know, it is liquid rock, basically. And we're going to dig in across here, and I think a pitcher pump right there can be uh, where we start. I'm pretty sure the thought of building a pitcher pump into magma surprises the bejesus out of every single new player because I know when I did it, well, when I discovered you could do it, I was like, wait, that makes absolutely no sense. How is that possible? But yes, it is, and now we can pump 11 tons of magma. So we'll just go up here, we'll select uh, Magma, enable Auto Bottle, make that a level 6, and there we go. Someone should be along shortly to pick up some of that tasty, tasty magma. They'll bottle it up, dump it into space, and we can slowly but surely start draining out this magma biome. We might want to expand our drainage facilities, but we'll do that later. Now you should take at least a full 800 kilos. Is it? Yep. Yeah. Wait, no, that was a ton of magma. That was literally a ton. You took 800. And they jump it up here. There they fall into the mesh tiles and they just dissipate into the background of space. Then those mesh tiles are made of iron ore. Bottle emptiers are fine. Yeah, it seems to be working. We might want to make another level above that just so we can speed this along. We've got a lot of magma to move. This seems to be going ahead pretty okay. It's a bit slow. It always is working with magma, but <laughs> yeah, we're dumping all the stuff up here. Uh, tiles, are they starting to melt? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I should maybe change this a bit, but you know what? I'm committed now. We're committed, it's just the way it is. We need one tile open to the background of space so it can actually dissipate. That's why we've got that there. In fact, what am I doing? Wait a minute, I can redo this. I can redo this more efficiently because this is dumb. That is a much better system. It all falls down into this layer here. That gets that sucks it all into the vacuum of space. Now, now all we gotta do is crank up magma supply. This should be, yeah, a little bit tricky. Also, we'll get access to these tungsten volcanoes. Won't help us, but it uh, would be nice. One of the nice bits about this is watching as the magma that gets sucked out of over here is driving down the level over this side. You can see it just slowly, slowly driving that all back. We'll be able to stick another pitcher pump there in a minute. I know it's a weird thing to take uh, pride in, but I just like doing stupid setups like this for draining magma. It takes what should be an annoying problem and makes it a slightly hilarious way of disposing it all into space. I suppose we've been doing that a lot with uh, nuclear waste as well. So now it's nuclear waste and magma just dumped into the void of space. With space, really the world's dustbin. After a little bit of expansion, we've uh, we've managed to take a fair chunk of the magma biome already and just dump it. Uh, that, it's just a tricky little bit of micromanagement getting back and forwards. And this, this here is a trap. See that? That's a hot polluted oxygen vent. Now you'll notice here that there's a, it's entombed here and here and here, but that tile there is open and I'm pretty sure that's the tile that activates it. The only reason this is not spewing hot oxygen down here is because it's uh, submerged in magma. If we were to break that open and remove all the magma, this would start spewing hot oxygen and this would no longer be a vacuum and then this whole place would become an inferno. I'm on to your tricks, Randy. I know what you're doing. We're not touching that. We're going to leave all of that magma in there and all of that magma that's there, we'll keep that blocked and we'll worry about this as the very last thing. It's the very last thing we're going to touch. We'll do everything else first before we go near that hot polluted oxygen vent. We'll break open the tungsten volcanoes. No problems. That thing, 
Hell no. One thing that I've never done before is cool the tungsten to the volcano using magma. Turns out the tungsten that comes out of this, uh, it solidifies if it goes below 3421 degrees. So the magma acts as a coolant for the tungsten. Um, yeah, it turns out you can just activate those tungsten volcanoes, let them bleed into a magma biome and it doesn't matter. Had no idea. Next time I'm going to cool tungsten, maybe I'll just uh, crack open the magma biome and pour it all in there. It might make for a, a sane way to get rid of this stuff. Though, yeah, your, your tungsten's going to be really hot afterwards. That's this stuff's 1500 degrees, so maybe be careful about what you build with it if you're going to use that as a cooling solution. We are, we're actually pretty far along on getting rid of most of the magma. We've only got this chunk over here left. And I know you're probably crying a little bit at the loss of all this energy, but you know what? It's, it's not a big deal. We've got plenty of energy for our needs long term. Now back home, I've made ourselves a new hire. Uh, the reason being, where are you? Here we have Ralph Dieter. Now Ralph here is going to be our farmer that we're going to leave behind on this planet. Yeah, we, we kind of forgotten this was all about farming, right? Uh, their skills are not perfect for it, but they've got, well, a few things going. We've got rocketry, suit wearing, and, well, a little bit in cooking. The cooking's not going to help. Rocketry and suit wearing means we can get them this level here, and it'll give them a little bit of uh, morale, and then they can get the suit wearing ones as well, because we're going to want to put them in exosuits for what we have in store. And, you know, them being able to run around in exosuits is kind of necessary for them to be like a good farmer. Now, over here, we're slowly but surely creeping our way across and, and uh, slurping up the last of the magma. There's a little bit down here. We keep running into little pockets here and there that we're going to have to dig down and remove, but it's not too much of a problem. It's just a little bit of slow manual work. Give me another, give me another couple of hours here. Well, it appears the blood rain has started. What the... I, I think I know what's going on there. Uh, this volcano basically heated up the magma until it turned into rock dust of some sort. Yeah. Rock gas. Yep. And then that rock gas basically went and interacted with the tiles and stuff until it condensed enough to fall back down. And our duplicates. You should probably not stay in there. You, you, yeah, get out of there. We are going to have to seal this in. Oh my god, are you still... You're still getting hurt in that case. You need to go get yourself some medical attention. Jesus. Uh, we're going to have to seal up both of these, I think. What's the temperature in here like? Oh, God. Yeah, there's some carbon dioxide in here, and I haven't been actually... I didn't suck it all out. A little bit of carbon dioxide escaped when the duplicate dropped out their suit. Well, I made them drop their suit by accident, and that carbon dioxide is keeping this running. It seems this thing just needs carbon dioxide as an atmosphere. It doesn't matter what pressure. So even this is only literally MCGs, it's... Yep, yeah, still seems to have to grow, so that's why I left it in there. Though I'm thinking now, you know, with that rock gas floating about the place, let's just seal in these volcanoes and not worry about it. Yeah, we're going to seal this one in as well. I got a little greedy and opened this back up again to try and grab out the tungsten. I mean, there was, there was seven tons of tungsten in there. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah, it's raining blood. Just, just, yep, it's fine. It's fine. There you go. They've done that five seconds ago. <sighs> Never mind. Well, well, we'll just mop up that magma. It's fine. It's only little droplets of the stuff. And uh, we'll dump that into the background of space as well. Did that get rid of it all? I think... Yeah, there's only a little bit of carbon dioxide left. That carbon dioxide is so small it can't really transfer temperature. So it does mean that nothing in here is like exploding with temperature heat. Uh, we've got the last of the tungsten out over there, have we? And yeah, once that's out, we'll seal this sucker up as well. I mean, free tungsten. You can't say no to that now, can you? I mean, 11 tons? Hell yeah. All right, we'll just finish off the last of the magma and hopefully there won't be any more surprises. We are down to the last few bottles of magma just right here. I use insulated tiles to squish the stuff in just to make sure it gets under the uh, the pumps. It's just sometimes there'll be that odd tile that just won't be under them and you've got to move it. You can't mop magma very well, unfortunately. It's just too viscous and you end up with piles like 170 or so and you just can't mop those. That means all we should have to do now is just put in one block right there. That'll force that magma out of there, either up or to the side. Either way, it'll be taken care of. Finally, after all that effort, we've got it done. That's just the entire magma biome dumped into space. Little bit of uh, carbon dioxide left in here, but we're going to drain all of that out. Reason being, we want to make this place nice and clean because, well, we've got to drain the heat out of a bunch of this material as well, I just realized. Uh, to drain the heat out of this, because we do want to open this up at some point. I've basically stuck in a temperature shift plate made of obsidian to drain heat out of it, and it's going to dump it into these igneous rock tiles. Once these have absorbed as much as they're going to absorb, or they melt one or the other, we'll just deconstruct them and put in some more. Everything that's constructed, it maxes out at about 45C. That's the hottest it can be when construction is completed. This stuff, yeah, 
See, we're draining the heat out. It's not perfect, but it does get rid of most of the magma heat. And what's, what are you at? Yeah, you're not changing temperature, are you? Uh, we'll sort something out with you in a bit. Would you look at that beautiful former magma biome? It's just all nice and smoothed out. We even uh, walled it in with some obsidian tiles here just to smooth off the bottom and make it nice and neat. And we walled in the rough edges along the side as well. And we used all obsidian because, well, when you build it out of obsidian, the obsidian loses all its heat. And I swept all the debris up here. So you've got your obsidian, your abyssalite, your igneous rock, all of it. Some of it's like a thousand degrees, some of it's more. In fact, at the end here, I think we have a whole bunch of tungsten that's at 1600 degrees. We'll, we'll dispose of the heat from that later. Unfortunately, before we can get started on our farms, a little bit of a minor issue has cropped up. And by minor, I mean, well, it almost semi-fatal. We ran out of oxalate in one of the rockets and we had to borrow oxalate from the other one. So now they're both even Stevens on about three tons of oxalate, which is fine. Then one of them ran out of berry sludge, so we had to share that out as well. So now that's spread across both of them, but that's fine. We're just going to send them back home for a quick restock. Should not be an issue. Uh, one second here, actually, if we look at this. To uh, refuel this rocket, what we did was we used this sucker here. We shot that diagonally, hit that there, hit that there, and refueled that one. Did we need to? No. But I just like the thought that this is a, a self-propelled rocketry system. We're just going to load everyone up. We're going to send them back home to yeah, our home planet. And then once they're here, they can land down here. We'll load them back up with food, oxygen, the whole nine yards we've got. Yeah, we have 40 tons of oxygen here. And calorie-wise, how many, how many berry sludge? 10 million, 10.1 million calories of berry sludge. I think we'll be fine on that front. Hold on, we'll just uh, return them back home. One thing I would like to check on launch is the wires. Yeah, this, these things are actually all part of our, our infrastructure here. And will they shred the wires? No, 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 we're grand, we're grand. But dear Lord, that is so much radioactive fallout. What's like the radiation levels down here? Yeah, not quite fatal, but high enough that you wouldn't want to hang around for too long. All right, we'll let that dissipate. For the time being, we'll just have to wait until they get back home, and once they've returned, we can come back here to finish off putting in our farming section. While our rockets are heading back, let's have a quick check on our uh, our radioactive planet, where our bees are still hard at work, and our... Oh god, the rad bolts are definitely hurting the frame rate. Yeah, the bees are still doing their thing down there, but more importantly, water-wise, we are still launching back mad quantities of water. And at the same time, the radiation amounts over here are just gotten to absolutely stupendous levels. Yeah, that's 500 rads every shot. 500 rad bolts per shot. That's how quickly it charges. It's up to 106,000 rads per cycle. That just does not make any sense. Yep, that's um, that's a lot of ra radiation. In fact, if any of our duplicates went near that, actually just stood beside it for probably a second, I'm pretty sure it would kill them. What's the rad exposure there? 87,000 rads. Ooh. Yeah, this up here is sort of incredible. This is 184,000 rads per cycle. I just don't want our duplicates going anywhere near that. I think that bug has not quite been fixed as uh, well as they would hope, or at least it still duplicates it at least a little bit. Our heroes have returned, and now we just got to make sure that they refill everything. We'll just set that, let them go outside, grab whatever they need. Once the rockets are stocked back up, we can send them straight back. In fact, uh, maybe let's charge them up. Oh, wait, no. Let's wait until the duplicates stop running around the rockets before we start firing highly radioactive bolts across there. This was really just a flying visit. They puffed back to pick up supplies and go straight back out again. I kind of like the way this works. We can send out the, the team of six. They take care of all of the remote work. And oh, that's how that ended up there. But yeah, they take care of all the remote work. And they're actually a solid team. And they come back up and pick up supplies whenever they need them. This over here is just going to start churning out more oxalite. By the time they return, we just chuck it into the ship and we're done. We don't have to spend any time waiting for it to load up into any modules. They just grab it, chuck it into the ship, and off they go again. It does give you a nice mobile force. Now, with all of that done, I'm going to burn through a whole bunch of these saved up rads. We've got 100,000 rad bolts saved up in this, which I think we're going to chuck down along here to make more diamond. Ooh, diamond-wise, how do you think we're doing on that front? And down the bottom here, yeah. We have slowly been coring out right to left. We've pr we've solidified this entire right-hand side of the map. Left-hand side of the map, not so much. we got a lot to go on that one. But hey, there's way more mass in there to eat through. And on our power plant up here, unfortunately, it's not able to keep active the whole time now. It's m minimizing out at... Oh, actually, we've gone up to 180 again. Well, 180 is what I max it out at. I don't let it go above 180, and when I minimize it at is 170. If the temperature in here starts to go below 170, we stop dumping in water so that we can save uh, the heat in the magma core. Or, well, keep this place hot enough, hot enough that it's a decent-sized battery. 
All of this steam in here, this 900 kilos of steam all the way around, just acts as rever reserve power in case you ever need it around here. But enough of that. Back to, was it Mod Modilius? Yeah, time to go back to Modilius and set up our, our farming selection. Returning to our wonderful little planet here, we have encountered just a minor bug that happens with the game sometimes. Our nuclear engines are, or whatever you want to call them, our Radbolt engine, it's giving off radiation when it landed. About 1200 rads, 1200 rads. In the middle here it's 1200 rads. This would be the best way to generate rads if it was actually replicatable or wasn't so not broken. All we have to do is launch the rockets and land them again and that should hopefully get rid of it. It's uh, kind of annoying because you can't get your dupes in and out without getting them radiation poisoning. Alright, wander off and come back with more rads. Also it'll help charge up our uh, rad bolt generator down there. What, the, oh, what did you do? Ah. Alright, so maybe we put some sedimentary rock down there and it got melted. Oops. It's fine. We can, we can replace that once these people come back. Now, please tell me the radiation doesn't stay around this. There we go. Radiation is dissipated. We're down to 100 rads or so. The other rocket should be back down in a minute. Same diff. With everyone back, it's about time we got around to putting in that farm. We, we started out with God knows how many cycles ago. However, there's one, one last thing I want to get rid of. And it's all this hot materials. Now, there's nothing we can do about the abyssalite, but all of the obsidian and the, what is it, the tungsten? We can fix both of those and make sure they're actually usable. Right now, if we try and use them in here, like I put in some tungsten pipes, it kind of generated a bit of heat because they're, they're pretty warm. But once they're finished building, they're fine. So all we have to do is go under utilities, grab ourselves a temp shift plate, and what we want to do is make it out of tungsten. Ah, there we are. 800 kgs of tungsten. Now, uh, we'll just stick that... Oh, where? Yeah, right here is fine. Actually, you know what? We'll stick it up here. Plenty of space. And we'll just... Oop, that's... All of it gone except for 531 kilos of tungsten left. So, one, two, three, four, say five? Boom. Perfect. In fact, I think we can get rid of even a little bit more tungsten because once the tungsten's actually been built into something, it no longer actually has any heat to it or its temperature gets evened out. So that should all get evened out to 45 degrees once it's all built. Despite the tungsten starting out at 1000 and something, it's now down to 45C. Now this is not really sustainable for big, like for long-term stuff, if you want to keep doing it again and again and again, but just for this one-off thing where we want to get a bunch of heat out of a bunch of material really quickly, this just saves us an awful lot of time. After all of that is done, we have managed to convert every single piece of obsidian bearing, or is it? 60 kilos. There's 60 kilos of obsidian that's still hot. All the rest of it's been cooled down. We can now bring all this stuff back inside into our core base. Before, we could not bring this in here without risking cooking the entire base alive. In fact, I had to be careful about launching and landing the rockets because we sort of cooked the internals here a little bit. That's why I installed this giant cooling loop. It goes through, the, well, it's not really a cooling loop. Temperature equalizer. It stabilizes, the temperature, it stabilizes the temperature between the water pool we have and the rest of the base, just to help out a bit. Yeah, once this is all done, I'll sweep that up, bring it inside, and we can finally, finally, finally start on the farms. This whole area fixed, finished, everything carted inside. We now have the base nice and self-contained, even if it is a little bit messy. Now comes time to do the food. And the first thing I ran into was the problem of, well, the tungsten volcanoes. I realized when we want to use these, we're going to need to uh, build a steam turbine on top of them. And that will take up that much space. And then we'll have to put some insulated tiles there as well to keep the heat in. So we're going to have, we can't go below this point realistically, because if we do, we're going to interfere with this thing. And also this one is the exact same height. So this is basically as high as we go. All of that effort, all of the time I spent clearing at the magma and all it gained us was this much space. Yeah, probably, probably should have thought about that a bit harder, but you know what? I, I regret nothing. Uh, down here, this is where we're going to start putting in our crops. Now, there was more than a few suggestions of what we should do with the crops. Oh, uh, but before that, one thing. Over here on the suggestions from the comments, I put in a little timer. This timer slows down uh, the release of the rad bolts. This way it only fires off once every 8 seconds or so. We could probably even change that to 10 seconds and it would still keep up with everything here. Actually, yeah, we'll change that to 10 seconds. Just so that there's not constantly rad bolts flying back and forth. Should help speed up the game a little bit. Okay, with that out of the way with... One very common suggestion is that we grow bristle blossoms because we have water. We have so much water. And honestly, I was very tempted by that. We could make so such a ridiculous quantity of bristle blossoms with that much water. I, I'm not sure how much farmland it would take to actually consume the water faster than we we're getting it in, but it, it was an interesting thought experiment. But no, 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 I decided not to go against that. Uh, next up was what we could actually do on this planet was just make a big uh, paku farm. As in, grab one of these 
and then breed Paku. There's an infinite trick where you can, well, there's a trick where you can infinitely breed a whole bunch of Paku, and they just keep replicating themselves. As in, you'd have one breeder, and you'd keep dumping the eggs into one t a one-tile pool, and you can effectively infinitely just keep dumping more and more Paku in, as long as you can keep feeding the breeder. Did not really want to go that way, as that would also affect performance. Which was also one of the reasons I didn't want to go to Bristle Blossoms, because we'd have to grow the Bristle Blossoms on another planet and fire them here, which would complicate things, them going off and stuff. Or we'd have to send all the water here and grow the Bristle Blossoms here. Both of those seemed complications, plus it wasn't using the new tech. So instead, what I want to try is, I want to try the new mutations. There's a new mutation here. Let's go grab one of these uh, planter pots. Let's say I grab Bristle Blossoms, and you can see there's this new mutation called Lysi. The Lysi mutation is a bit odd. What it does is it increases fertilizer usage by 25%, but you get a bonus crop of 600 calories of meal lice. As in, whatever plant this is on, you get an extra 600 calories of meal lice whenever you harvest it. That's pretty nice. Not amazing, but like, don't get me wrong, I'd much rather go with the uh, exuberant variety if we were going to be doing this. That's a 75% bonus, blah, blah, blah. But what makes it so special is you can apply it to BAM lilies. BAM lilies can get the lysi variant. And the great thing about BAM lilies, they don't require any sustenance. You don't have to feed them. You don't have to water them. All you have to do is give them a chlorine atmosphere. They don't even consume the chlorine. They just grow no matter what. Few things about them. 12 cycles of life. They only, they, it takes them 12 cycles before you can harvest them. But that's about the same as wild planting stuff because that was the third option. What if we just wild plant a whole bunch of crops? Well, yes and no. For example, if we wild plant mealwood, we'd have to do three mealwood, three tile space, three mealwood, three tile space, three mealwood. That's because how pips plant them. They won't, they won't give you a full solid line. And wild planted mealwood would give us the exact same amount of calories as wild planted bam lilies, well, lysi bam lilies. But we can cram in way more lysi bam lilies. The downside though is we're going to need to give them radiation. But they're going to need 25 rads and I think we can sort that. I figure we do douse a whole bunch of them in 25 rads and if we do it right they should start mutating but slowly uh, you know what let's uh, start it up and see i think we will yeah we can let atmosphere back in here again but i think we're going to keep this place as it is we want to dump a whole bunch of chlorine in here and we want to chlorinate this area so that the uh, the crops can grow down here to make this system work we're going to need to fill this entire area with chlorine and we can't have any other gases mixing in like carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide will float to the bottom so I'm thinking we're going to chop off the base, everything below, say, this point. We'll put in liquid lock here, and then everything below here will become chlorinated. Uh, which means we're going to need to move that uh, polluted water tank, which is painful, but it needed to be moved anyway because of the space requirement. So I'm thinking we'll make a quick water tank over here, and we'll move all of the, the water we've got lying around into this section. To help speed this along, because, let's face it, one water pump would take forever, I'm thinking a few pitcher pumps and uh, a whole bunch of bottle emptiers should be able to make this a uh, much less painful endeavour. In fact, let's stick another one over there. We want to make sure we've got every single area tapped into. We might even want to deconstruct some of these down here so that the pumps can access all the way to the bottom. Uh, this should only take a few cycles. Terraforming a planet does take a little bit of time, I suppose. I've just realized this has taken me freaking ages to do this, but we've managed to clear out, well, the entire magma biome. We've got this whole place just cleaned up. We've got all the water tucked into one corner. Now I'm just going to do some minor cleaning up here and there. I'm going to squish all our gases up into this one pocket, and we're going to turn this entire area down here into just one chlorine section. And then, then we can put in nothing but lots of bam lilies, which we'll have to mutate. But once it's started, it should be fairly straightforward to do. Which means I should take out all this piping as well. A little bit of minor cleaning up. We have started the pumping of the gases out of here. However, we're going to want to do some sealing off. I think everything above here. So everything up here will be oxygenated and everything below here is going to be chlorinated. And uh, that means we have to move this water lock down just one tile. That's fine. I, I put it in the wrong place to begin with. I thought this is where we we're going to be putting it, but I realized we needed more space. That should work. Yeah, close enough. You know what? Let's uh, deconstruct a few more tiles here to make this simpler. We can drop down the last of that water, and that should hopefully push it out. I presume there's carbon dioxide there or something that's messing up that uh, liquid lock from fully filling out, but it's grand. Uh, we've moved all our batteries up here as well. In fact, all of our hardware has been moved up above this line. So, where is it? Yeah, everything has been moved up above this line, except for the few crops and things, but that's fine. Uh, with that done, what we do is finish that off there, boom, boom, and seal that in there. 
that should give us a perfectly sealed off area and then once we've drained all the gases from here we can just fill this whole area with chlorine and goddamn squeaky puffs i might just kill all the critters in here we don't want them oh that was one other suggestion to grow mushrooms because mushrooms run off slime and slime is quite efficient so you'd ranch some puffs use the puffs to create the slime and then the slime to feed to the mushrooms I, I was tempted but it was just too much ranching uh, the more ranching you do the worse it is for frame rate so i'm and also i'm really curious to see how this lysi band lilies will work out it's basically free food which means you could do it a whole lot of it the only downside is you need 25 rads which gets complicated i'll go into that in a bit but first uh, let me get in a whole bunch of gas pumps and start draining this place out since this is quite a large area and we're try harding here to try and get god damn it cayenne why are you sleeping there? The dupes have this annoying habit of standing in places they shouldn't have and stopping other people from using stuff they want. Like, uh, Chief Multi-Hat, you don't even belong inside here. So why are you in here? You're just, you're just deciding to hang out. If we tell you to leave, Kayin goes, oh yeah, now I can get in. So they shouldn't, I wish there was a way to lock them to their rockets so that they wouldn't go into other ones unless they really needed to, you know, to pick up resources or something like that, but there doesn't seem to be a way. One thing I have done is I've stopped them from going through these doors. These are limited to the dupes that actually belong there to stop them using each other's toilets, which was causing all sorts of confusion. But you're still going to have the dupes uh, sleeping outside every so often. Or, oh yes, where were we? Yeah, try harding here. If you'll notice, these gas pumps are now not saturating fully. They're down to 370, 380 grams of oxygen per second. How? How are you trapped? You can't get back into your rocket because someone else is in the way, aren't they? Yep, 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 get out of the way. There you go. Now that you're out of the way. Yay! See, there's some weird thing where if they stand at the front door, if they stand right here, no one else can get by them for some reason. I, I don't know why. Uh, but to make sure that we maximize or speed up how quickly we get the gases out of here, we're going to switch to mini gas pumps. Now, this is just a... It's one of the quirks of the way of making a vacuum works. These giant gas pumps are great when there's lots of gases to pull out, but once they go below the maximum amount they can draw, and in this case they're what, they're getting 130 grams per second, you're better off just sticking in a, a whole bunch of smaller gas pumps. Now this is more to do with, uh, well, you're better off power-wise. Otherwise it would cost you an awful lot of power to put in this many gas pumps. So we're just going to stick in a whole bunch of these everywhere, and this should drastically speed up pulling out all the gases. However, a few things to note. One, make sure all the gases are homogen homogenized because if you've got, well, this polluted oxygen will be a bit of annoyance, but if you've got multiple different types of gases, they won't mix very well in the pipes. So you're better off sort of scraping out all the other gases first. Then you're going to want to link them all together. Because of the way gas mechanics work, it, it takes a long time for gases on the edge to get sucked towards the gas pumps. So you're better off, if you really want to do a vacuum very quickly, just having your gas pumps, well, lots of gas pumps spread out to, to vacuum out the entire area. However, normally I'm in no rush and I'll just chuck in two to four gas pumps and then just walk away. But here we're sort of limited on power because we're running off a small amount of solar. And it sort of just made sense to do this as quickly as possible. Uh, one second and... As you can see already, we're down to MGs, milligrams already. We're not down to MCGs yet, but we will be there quite shortly, especially considering how quickly they are doing this. And you can keep an eye out here and, well, you can see that they're causing little vacuum pockets to form around them. And at the same time, you'll notice they're only pulling out still 11 grams of oxygen. This is what makes it so powerful. You've got them so spread out, they're pulling it from all different areas, and then when the vacuum starts, it'll quickly, quickly turn to vacuum. This will save you a few cycles when you're trying to vacuum out large areas. And the vacuum starts. It's gotten down low enough that the gases just naturally dissipate themselves. I think you need to hit about ooh, two to four milligrams or MCG, sorry. And then once you hit that point, yeah, you can see it just spreading out like wildfire. And done. It'll take a little bit longer to get to some of the further edges because those further edges are well further away from the gas pump. So it took a little bit of extra time. But finally, we've almost vacuumed out this area. To think, this asteroid used to be covered in swamps and all sorts of stuff. And now it's just hollow. One last thing to do before we remove the gas pumps is we need to get those puffs out of there. If they had a dropped an egg, if any of them had dropped eggs, I move the eggs out of the way, but I can't leave them in there. If we leave them in there, you know one of them is going to decide, hey, you know what, I, I haven't given off slime in ages, but I'm going to do it right now just to destroy this vacuum. And now they're meat. In fact, uh, let's also get rid of that fish down there as well. All that meat can be fed to the tree. It all gets dumped up here and the tree will happily eat it for us. Handy way to dispose of all those calories. Which is, I suppose, why we're here. Uh, let me tidy this up and let's start on our next section, which we'll be putting in the actual bam lilies. 
Our next step here is going to be, well, how do we want to manage all of this? There's loads of different ways you can go around uh, harvesting things and picking them up. But what I want to do is, well, I want to use a few techs we don't normally use too much. I mean, we're using bam lilies, we might as well go nuts, you know what I mean? Uh, first off, we're going to get all the bleach stone that's over here and we're going to dump it in this storage bin. That will cause this whole place to start filling up with, well, gas, chlorine gas, which we need for the bam lilies. Um, there, slowly but surely, that will... Actually, let's check that on the overview. Yep, yep. Beautiful. Perfect, that spreads out nice and it'll go fill up that whole area for us. Uh, actually, I think that is the last piece of polluted oxygen on the entire map. All the polluted oxygen has been destroyed, which is... Oh, yeah, great. Anyway, that's going to take a while, but this should pressurize this whole area. We need about 150 grams of chlorine per tile, or the bamboo leaves won't grow. And down here, it's time to start planting. Though, hmm, how do I explain this? We do need radiation. So, what we're going to do is put in a wheeze wart here. And that wheeze wart should provide enough radiation to the surrounding tiles that the bam lilies planted here and there as well and one two three four five six seven i believe and then we'll put in one second yeah we'll put in another wheeze wart there that one is requires fertilization that's the only thing that is actually required to keep this running is phosphorite the wheeze warts eat one kilo of phosphorite per cycle or four kilos of phosphorite per cycle which not too bad for us. We've got actually got plenty of phosphorus right around the map. Yeah, one second, let those all fill in. What temperature is this at? 44? Why are you... Ah, pressure. So the pressure is below 100 grams. That's fine, that's fine. It'll build back up. It'll get up there as that stuff uh, off-gasses. You'll see it's slowly off-gassing there. Actually, hmm. I wonder if it off-gasses better when it's outside of these. You know what? Dump it on the ground. See if it makes a difference. Oh, I know what we should do. We'll split it up into smaller containers. That would actually be a smarter plan. Then it will off-gas much more rapidly. It takes a little bit of time, but hey, we're try-harding here. Well, we put about 62 kilos in each one of these. I don't know if that will make much of a difference, but hey, can't hurt to try. God, we don't even have grams yet. We might have to do something more drastic to increase uh, production. Now, down here, I think I messed up slightly rads. There's 31 rads up to there. Ah, there we go. 0.2, 15... For example, this, uh, this is only 23 rads. We need 25 for each one of the bam lilies if they have any chance to mutate or to grow the ones that we have mutated. So once that's up and running, there we go. 30, 29, yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. So we need to place those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tiles apart, just fine. Now you need two near the end, though I think we'll need three on the top layer. Just uh, the, the radiation from this actually leaks through these tiles above it, so it gives a little bit of a rad bonus, meaning on the very ends here where there's no other... Weasel wart on the opposite side, you can only usually get the first two in range of 25 rads. So, for example, over here, 31, 23, yeah. Once you go more than two tiles away, you're down to 23 rads. So, what you really want to do is sandwich them in between as many of these weasel warts as possible, because weasel warts are going to be our limiting factor for now. When it comes down to seeds, you'll notice we have 384 bam lilies and 42.7 weasel warts. It's, it's going to be a while before we run out of uh, bam lilies. The weasel warts are ever what'll hold us back. Now, one downside, these weasel warts are going to chill everything down. That is bad, because the bam lilies don't like the cold. They don't want to be down below 35C. So we're going to have to actually rotate some liquids through here to keep everything warm, but that will come in a bit. For now, let's uh, let's keep expanding this. To help out with chlorinating the whole place for our... God, this is already starting to get a little bit out of control. I love it. Uh, we've been sending bleach stone from back home. Our home planet has a whole bunch of this stuff. It's not like we're using this stuff, so yeah, let's fire it back. Uh, also, I've... Team. I do love that gun. All right, uh, send a little bit more rad bolts down along the line. <laughs> we really should automate this, but the problem is we're producing too much rad bolts for it to be worthwhile. Come on, just give me gap. There, perfect. Okay, I can launch the rest of them. Uh, they, over here we have stockpiled almost 200,000 rad bolts, namely because I've been faffing about and having coming back to turn that on every so often. I could just turn it on and leave it always on, but that feels like it would be a waste. Now, down here, we still need to actually do one last thing before this will be operational, and that is put in some sort of, uh, well, put in a, a heating solution. We need a heating solution so that this uh, the place doesn't get too cold. As it is, we don't have enough gas just yet, but give us some time, give us some time, and we put in the, uh, the heating solution that we're going to draw from this water pool over here. This incredibly simple cooling solution is just going to be the water down here is going to act as a stabilizer, and then that water is going to circulate all the way through here to bring it up to the required temperature. Now, of course, there's a bunch of wheeze warts down here chucking out cold all the time, so how do we stop the, the chill from eventually overpowering the water tank? Well, 
Tepidizer. We'll stick a tepidizer in there to keep the temperature whatever we want. And we can use this whole system to cool down the entire area. For example, these batteries up here are getting a bit warm. We'll just rotate the liquid through there as well. Any heat will get absorbed by the uh, Huizworts and yeah, that's pretty much the basics of it. So this allows us to get lots and lots and lots, hopefully, of calories. Uh, one second, I need to... There we go. All right, give me a few more minutes and I think we'll have the guts of it in place. It's not mm, perfect by any means. There will be some modifications that need to be done and we need to get the chlorine gas pressure in here up to above 150 grams. If we make it higher than that, we'll be getting more cooling out of our wheezworts, which might be preferable depending on how much heat's been generated. Also, we really don't want to be la <laughs> launching and landing our rockets a lot considering our, uh, our water tank's going to be underneath that. That could get a little bit warm if we're not careful. This here is, well, well, it's not quite finished. It's quite a good outline for where we're going and it's pretty easy to see what's going to happen. All of these uh, bamlilies are all in range of 25 rads, minimum. So every single one of them, all the way from the edge ones, all the way from the, to the edge over there. Every single last one of them. So the only thing this thing is consuming is phosphorite, which runs the uh, Huizworts. In fact, we could even get rid of the Huizwort phosphorite demand if we brought in pips and had them wild planted. This would make this whole thing completely self-sustained without any inputs at all. But uh, we don't have pips just yet, and I wasn't bothered going to get them until I got... Uh, I wanted to start this at least. Now what will happen is all of these will start mutating because they're... Well, some of them will mutate and we'll get a few seeds, but what we were looking for is the lysy ones. And I figure... We plant, we just keep going up and up and up. If the more of these we have, the more likely we are to get the mutation we're looking for. And eventually we slowly but surely replace all of them with the lysy variety. Once the lysy variety is in, it's, uh, it's where these sweepy do sweepies come in. I found a use for sweepies, I think. The reason being, we could put in, oh, chipping and we could put in auto sweepers, but that requires us to have an extra tile or to have an extra tile above them. We can't fit them in like that. We'd have to put in an extra space for them which means every three layers we could actually fit in a whole extra one. Well, that's what we're wasting. So that means if we put in a sweepy dock, the sweepy can go all the way from one end to the other and pull all the resources back to this, which we then dump into the conveyor loader. And this one auto sweeper right here can pull from all four sweepy docks right here, dump it into that, and then we'll filter out all the lice loaf. Lice loaf can get fed to the tree, all the seeds and the bam lilies themselves. They can all get chucked somewhere else. We don't really care. We'll just put some filtration on it. And this should allow us to mass produce bam lilies and eventually get to mass producing lysy bam lilies. It will take a while and we're not really in that much of a rush, to be honest. We can fill in this whole place. It'll take a little bit of time, but once it's all filled up, it's sorted. Now to temperature manage it, we've got a tepidizer over here. That thing's set to heat up to, was it, I said 43 degrees. We could go a bit higher. Bam lilies have quite a, a good range of temperatures. They can go up to 85, but I think 43 should be good. That keeps all of those temperature controlled. If it gets too cold in here, this thing heats them up. Actually, what's that coming out at? Ooh, 39. We might want to go up another degree. What's this coming at? 41. You know what? Yeah, I think we'll put that up to 45, just to be on the safe side. Now, one thing we will need to do is probably jack up the power a bit. The reason being, this tepidizer is going to be kicking in every so often, and these uh, sweepy docks are going to want to charge every so often too. But a little bit of a power spruce can be managed. I think this should work out quite nicely. Now, I know we won't have a... Uh, what's wrong with you? Never mind, I, I sent them back to work. Just a few quick notes here before we knock off. One is, we're going to need to leave a farmer behind. One farmer is going to come in here and we're going to build them their own specialised rocket. And it's going to have an oxygen tank on it and their spacefare module will be set up to hold one duplicate and keep them nice and cosy. However, we're still going to need oxygen for it and I prefer not to fly it back to our home planet. So I was thinking, infectious polluted oxygen vent. Now, these things on your home planet useless. There's no need for them. Namely because they're only going to provide enough oxygen to feed like two duplicates maybe, maybe like two and a half tops. Actually not even that, maybe you're lucky if it's one and a half. But what we can do here is we can tame them, grab this, run the oxygen through here to cool it down a bit, then uh, just run it through some deodorizers. We've got more than enough sand around here somewhere. And then that will give us the clean oxygen to feed into our farmer. This gives us a sustainable source of oxygen on this planet. There's no water here. But if we tame that or this hot polluted oxygen vent down here, and this was just hot polluted oxygen that we could also root through here, we could dump all the heat into this because, well, the wheezworts are going to eat that in a roundabout sort of way. And then we take all that oxygen, dump it into our rocket, and that will keep our duplicate nice and happy. It's just a nice way to get a nice sustainable base on a faraway location. Now, it's going to take it's going to take a couple of hundred cycles before this whole thing starts full kicking into high gear. Reason being, we just got to wait till all the mutations kick in, and these things take 12 cycles to grow, so a little bit of time. But I figure if we have so many of them, 
will eventually hit a sort of a reproductive rate that'll be incredible. Uh, actually, how is our fella doing? Ralph Dieter here needs seven points before they're going to become useful. They're going to need three points so they can get into improved farming, and then they're going to need another four, five, six, seven so they can get exosuit training. We're going to be equipping them with a, a rad suit, though. Namely because of how, um, well, irradiated it's going to be down here. I mean, it's not that bad. It's pretty low-level rads, but I'd prefer to keep them just a little bit safe considering how much time they're going to spend in here. They're going to be spending their entire day just harvesting these plants. That's all they're going to be doing all the time. Oh, and topping up the wheeze warts. Anyway, I'm uh, going to cut this out here. Sorry about the, the schedule being all over the place. It's just uh, life is a bit all over the place at the moment, unfortunately. But no, it'll, it'll calm down in the next uh, five or six weeks. I should be back onto a normal schedule again. So apologies for all the mess ups. But uh, the moment I get something done nowadays, I just kick it out the door. So that's why things are a little bit haphazard. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm -hmm.